order the meeting of the Exeter School Board um, at April 13th at 5.33 p.m. Um, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. So that brings us to public input. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to speak? I don't see anyone. So then that would then bring us to Allison Battles and the PTO update. Hi, thank you. Um, we've got so much going on right now and I was actually running around picking up sponsorship checks and I'm a little delayed on preparing my notes, but um, I'll try to be succinct. So as far as needs for the schools, um, I know we're gonna be providing some picnic tables for Main Street School pretty soon um, to help with the transition back to full-time in-person learning. I'm sure we'll discuss that a little bit more on tomorrow's PTO call. And just a reminder to Mr. Bearstow and Mr. Adler to just send any um, other requests our way. Um, we've been doing a lot of fundraising this year and um, we, we have room in the budget. Um, box tops is still lagging, but it's definitely picked up in the last couple of months. We've, we've gained about $40 in two months. Um, so it's at 190 and the textile bins are kind of making up for that. I think they're at about 5,000 for the year, which is really good. Um, I think in our biggest year ever, we made 7,500 and that was last year. Um, cause I think a lot of people were cleaning out their houses for those last two months of school um, when everyone was home. So um, we're on track to, to do just as well, I think this year with the textile bins. Um, and it's a really good time for spring cleaning if anyone is um, purging their closets. Um, the gift card raffle that we did for April did really well. It made $2,330. Um, the winners are being contacted via email every night this month. And some other notable updates are plans are underway for Teacher Appreciation Week, um, which is the week of May 3rd. And ideas have been shared with the principals and will be discussed on our next PTO call tomorrow. Um, we've been working all year on updating the websites, both Get Fit and the PTO main website, and they are complete. Um, the new PTO site looks really nice. So check them out at exeterelementarypto.org and getfitinmay.com. Um, our next PTO call, as I said, will be tomorrow at 5.30 via Zoom, and a link went out from the principals to Main Street and Lincoln Street school families on Monday. Um, elections for four open positions will be held, president, secretary, hospitality coordinator, and enrichment coordinator. So if anyone's interested in those positions, please um, come on the call, and if you don't have the Zoom link, please let me know or let the principals know. Um, Get Fit is just full steam ahead right now. Um, we've been doing a lot on social media. Um, I wanna give a special shout out to Jennifer Gardas, who's our social media manager. She has a first grade daughter. And uh, another special shout out to Melissa Guy, who jumped in um, at like on a moment's notice to help with registration this year um, because our previous registration volunteer couldn't do it um, for, obvious reasons, um, but she's been amazing. Jennifer has been amazing. Um, we're doing really, really well on social. We've had a lot of activity and I think it's really um, helping the race um, and people are getting excited. We've done a lot with videos. Um, Sam Wynn and Keith Schmidt have done, uh, and Greg Dusall have done videos of the t-shirt winners, the course, um, Keith helping with sponsorship this year. It's just all hands on deck. We're like a thir two thirds cut in half or our committee from last year. So there's like a third of the people doing all the work. Um, and it's just been really a good team effort. So I think we're at about 50 for registration, which is actually pretty normal this time of year. And it'll pick up as the race gets closer. Um, sponsorship is at, I'm just trying to add in a deposit that I made this morning. I think we're at a little over 11,000. Um, it's hard to tell because we have some money in the PayPal that hasn't been carried over. Um, but that's moving along too. And 
we're hosting a drive-through pickup um, for t-shirts and bibs. That'll be on Saturday, May 15th in the morning. I think we said nine to 12, is that right, Steve? Um, and the teachers of both schools are gonna be handling that um, because they wanna see everybody. And it's just a night they love to volunteer for Get Fit. And since there's no actual physical event this year, the teachers are really excited to help with the um, bib pickup. And um, Stacy Newman, who's a fourth grade teacher who always sings their national anthem is going to be doing a video of herself singing the national anthem so that we can post it on social media um, the morning of the race, which starts uh, Sunday, May 16th, the race starts. And then you can run it um, virtually through Sunday, May 23rd. So you have a week to do it your way, um, running, walking, biking, skateboarding, however you wanna do it. Um, and you have a week to do that. So, and then um, another really exciting thing is since we didn't get to have a t-shirt last year, but we did have a t-shirt winner for last year's fifth grade, that t-shirt design is going on the bibs. And we just got a sample of that the other day and it looks amazing. So we're really excited about that um, and that that t-shirt winner is gonna get her due and this year's t-shirt winner will be on the t-shirt. So it's just a really nice way to just kind of acknowledge everyone who had a hand either last year or this year. So I think that's it. I know that's a lot, but I'm trying to make sure I got everything. <laughs> so does anyone have any questions? No, okay. Hi, Allison, thank you for all that. I do have a couple questions. Okay. Um, so um, the way that the race is set up this year, um, and thank you guys for still working so hard on it. I know it's been challenging. Um, is there like different, like are the kids still gonna be running fun runs on their own plus the 5K or is it all 5K or how does that work? All 5K um, and it's a little bit more for a child, but it's $15 um, and we are still offering scholarships. So we have asked the principals to kind of make sure that the teachers identify anyone who has a need and then just to let us know. So um, that will be taken care of. Um, we kind of figured that the normal cost of the fun run is $8. Um, and since there was really no way to supervise that in a safe way, we just decided have people do it as a group, like a, a pod or you know a bubble or a family. Um, it's a flat fee, $30 for adults, that's 19 and older, um, and then $15 for students. So that's 18 and under. Um, we just, it, we tried to really keep it simple this year with that. But again, scholarships are available um, if anyone needs one. Okay, that sounds exciting. Okay. Thank you for all Sarah, did you have a question too? I thought I saw your hand. Yeah, I did. I just wanted to talk about teacher appreciation. If there's ever a year for everyone to come together to thank our teachers, this is the year to do yes. so. Um, and I would imagine since in the past, it's been focused around all of us uh, bringing in special food and desserts and things like that in order to help our teachers or recognize our teachers who are continuing to teach remotely, that that might be more challenging. Is the committee talking about like a shift this year in, in teacher recognition, just that we can prepare to participate? Yeah, so I, I'm still wrapping my mind a little bit around the idea that's been shared. Um, Nicole Mazer and Sarah Vallad are hospitality coordinators and they have a pretty good handle on the idea that they have. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically going to be like a room service menu bagged lunch. Um, everything will be like individual items. Um, nothing will be um, handled like, you know, we used to ask for like bulk donations from people, but now we're gonna be doing just like individual bags of chips or something like that. Um, and then they'll choose what they like and we would deliver that on a specific day. Um, and then I think we're targeting Thursday and Friday of that week. That's what we typically do. And I think it being the week after April vacation, um, that would be easier for the schools anyway not to have us show up on Monday and Tuesday <laughs> after April vacation, also after the first full week back. So, um, <laughs> and then let's see, she sent me a sample menu. It's just kind of um, like a VIP, like it's just, it's cute. It looks like a door hanger. Um, and then the teachers get to choose what they'd like. Um, and we're targeting another idea for the end of the year that's kind of 
a little bit of, of a surprise, so I don't want to give it away <laughs> just yet, um, but it's going to be just kind of um, a nice way to send the teachers off at the end of the school year, so it's kind of like a teacher appreciation part two. Um, if there's any help needed to get certain things to remote teachers, yeah, you know, I would volunteer. I know other okay. board members would would reach out to do those kinds of things because I think we want them to feel included. In Absolutely, yeah. So we would definitely include the remote teachers. Yeah, that's not even. Wonder. Oh, all right. Right, right. Just offering, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we'll, I think with the we'll get a little better sense of what Nicole is and Sarah are thinking of on the call tomorrow, um, and then we'll be able to formulate a plan of of what we'll need to do for the remote teachers and the in person teachers. Um, and maybe I don't even know. I'm not even sure who's staying remote. Um, so that may be something that the principals can share with us tomorrow, or if you were sharing it tonight, I have no idea. So um, I will let you take that piece but um were there any other questions thank you you're welcome sarah thank you for asking all right thanks everyone thank you allison okay so that brings us to um the sau 16 administrative update esther Molly, do you want to go over the financial? Sure, sure. I'll go first. Um, so in your board pack was the financial. And since last month, changes in expense went up about $40,000 for the year projection. And that's as expected as we return to school in full to have some more expenses. And there wasn't one area that was the big ticket item. It was pretty much across the board in the different functions of the school. And then revenue rose by $4,500. So in the board pack, your projected fund balance is $1,077,591. Now, remember the first $75,000 will go to the special ed trust fund voted, which then means just over a million dollars would be returned to taxpayers. So what I've done for you is I've pulled the last three years what your give backs were, just so you have an idea to compare. So last year you ended with um, $485,000, but the first 75 went to the special ed trust fund. So you returned 410. The 18, 19 school year, you ended with $511,000. And again, $75,000 to the trust fund. So you returned $436,000. And then in 2017, 18, you ended with $715,000, was done to the trust funds so that all went back to the town so if you take the average of those one year is a little bit higher than the other two but the average of those three is five hundred and twenty thousand dollars so did anybody have any questions on what was included in the board pack no i just have a comment though isn't but when the fund balance that we've returned uh, that the amount that you're citing is after we've done some projects because typically we've had a budget workshop at the end of the year and we've done things like this past year, for example, we bought um, a bunch of computers so that we could have a one to one for every student. Um, so we've done some of those projects pretty much every year. Yes. So the, the amount that you're talking about, the million dollars is prior to any projections for projects. Is that right? Well, so the so the numbers that yes, the million dollars that I just spoke is does not include any additional projects that you'd like to do. OK. I just want to make sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Did anybody else have any other questions on the financial that was included in the board pack? I have a quick question. The, the, when we have the budget meeting towards the end of the year to, to discuss about other expenses, uh, like the computers, I can't remember if the paving of Lincoln Street came out of a different fund or if it was the fund balance It might have come out of capital project, but is that a meeting that's open to the public. That I believe that's discussed in the last public board meeting correct Esther. The budget workshop is we have often held it as a small group, but if someone wanted to participate, would they be able to do that Esther. Yeah, it's posted as, yes, it's posted as a budget workshop. 
just and with a in this case probably a zoom link or by that time people I don't know, may be different but definitely it is open to anyone yes I, I know in the past we haven't had anyone from the public attend I know that there's been a lot more uh, sort of attention to the school board and allocation of costs and what we're doing so I only I bring that up just you know for people who might be watching or watching this later that um, they could come to do that and listen. Thanks. And then if there are no other questions, we did include the recent manifest in your board pack. And again, in lieu of the physical signature, we can make a motion and use the minutes to document that approval for the auditors. Has everybody had a chance to review those? Um, is anyone would like to make a motion to accept the manifests as presented? I can make a motion to accept the manifest as presented. Thank you, Sarah. Is I'll there a second? second? I'll second. Thank you. Is that Patty? I can see you. I think it was Deb. Deb. I was going to say, I don't think that was Patty. Um, thank you, Deb. Um, okay, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. So that motion could pass. So also, that's all you need for that, Molly? Yep, uh, that's all I need. Yep. And that concludes the financial. Oh, sorry. Right. So, can, can you just do a roll call vote on that? Because we are on Zoom. Okay, so roll call vote. Uh, Patty Surratt. Aye. Patrick O'Day. Aye. Deb Wheeler Bean. Aye. Sarah Edwards. Aye. John Mullins, aye. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, and that concludes the financial report unless anyone has any further questions. Thank you, Molly, appreciate you. it. On to the SAU 16 board report, which was in your packet. I'll just highlight a few things. Uh, the biggest thing I think in hum human resource news is contracts are ready to go out uh, upon approval of the nomination list from board. So, um, that's all good news. We're continuing to meet with um, all the teachers uh, at Maine and Lincoln Street that are up for recertification. I happen to be the contact person at the SAU. They go over their portfolio that they've been developing over the past three years. And um, I get to hear a bunch just about amazing things that the teachers are doing um, to support students and their projects and their passions. So uh, their professional growth has been like I said, this is probably one of my favorite things we do at this time of year. So uh, kudos to all those Lincoln and Maine teachers. And that's across the board. Everyone's that been meeting at the SAU with those teachers has they've been great. Really, really good. Um, the DEIJ work continues. That subcommittee has been working on a vision statement, which will be brought to the first uh, full committee uh, tomorrow. So we're excited to see that. We're moving forward with that balanced scorecard. Um, subcommittees, you will get to see that if you if you're not on one of those committees as we get closer and closer. Um, SAU 16 has submitted three proposals for the 2021 Aurora National Conference. As you may recall, we've brought teams um, to that in the past, and uh, now we hope those teams will present. So one of them uh, is uh, comp progression and competency-based education. One of them is really uh, on the curriculum to kill a mockingbird, including the missing voices narrative and race and equity, which is awesome. Uh, Abby Hood and Katie Gallo are partnering with Toy and Augustus to submit their proposal on centering social justice in a predominantly white school district. Um, and then our team is submitted a proposal on systems transformation through competency-based learning. So we're hopeful that some, all will get accepted and we'll be uh, presenting at a national conference, which is great. We continue to work on the portrait of an educator and that'll be coming to you, we hope in May. Um, as you know, uh, this is our week for the second round of shots. Uh, I had my second shot yesterday. I would recommend that you hydrate, 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 get a good night's sleep and hydrate, hydrate, because I've had no effects and that was what I did. So. That's what uh, we've been hearing is if you extra hydrate that that may alleviate may I'm not a physician by any means, but it seemed to be work for this hallway. So that's the only antidotal information I can give you. But if you're getting it on Saturday or some other day, um, Friday for Lincoln and Maine, remind your staff to drink some Gatorade or Pedialyte or smart water or whatever and um, drink extra because that seemed to work. 
Um, and then last but certainly not least, our social, emotional, mental health. We continue to brainstorm and work with them. Some of the highlights uh, for our students, we are continuing to extend those interventions and expand those, um, particularly as kids return. We are having a K through 12 brainstorming session with our student services folks, which includes social workers and school counselors and behavior uh, folks, thinking about what the needs are, how else can we meet those needs and what else resources do, that, do those folks think? So we're continually evaluating that. As for staff, we have started pushing out a four part um, mini series, just about easy, one quick activity that we push out on a Monday for kind of mindfulness and, and wellness. Um, as well as we are also created a resource document. We've got scripts from Allison Roy, who's with the Trauma Center. Um, and for teachers upon return to school, when I say scripts, just recognizing that although some people are really excited that school is starting, some folks are not, students and staff. So kind of balancing those statements with, hey, we're really glad you're here. And we understand if this might be a tough day for you or a tough week for you. So balancing that for people so no one feels um, that they aren't valued with their own feelings that they may be having about return to school. So just letting everyone know that um, sometimes that can be hard to come up with the words. And so we're trying to raise that awareness and give our teachers words should they choose to use that. We're also creating check-in systems for our staff, such as Lincoln and Maine have tripods. They continue to use those and we'll continue to implement those. Um, and that's when three people are grouped together, staff-wise co colleagues, and they can check in, um, see how each other's doing. They have a self-care wheel they can work to. And so they've done a lot of work, particularly at Lincoln and Maine uh, in the preschool to ensure staff have additional resources um, to support their needs. For parents, we did start that four part series last night uh, around trauma, what the brain does, how to deal with uh, the COVID and in your home and some tools and strategies. Um, again, that seemed to go really well last night. I know we had about 15 people attend, uh, which isn't a huge number, but we'll continue to push that out and hope that more folks um, may attend that. It was a really a fabulous presentation. Uh, we also will be doing a panel in early, uh, mid-May, I think it's the 13th for uh, the community on balancing mental health needs and academic needs for parents. Uh, we'll have a panel with uh, Seacoast Mental Health Representative, the Trauma Center. We'll also have uh, our school counseling department will be represented as well as social workers and BCBAs and student services in general. So we'll have a school perspective, a trauma perspective and a kind of local mental health perspective. Uh, they'll each do a short presentation and I will put out an email for questions ahead of time and uh, they'll answer questions at the end, either questions we got ahead of time or we'll also uh, have a, a webinar so people could put questions in and we can present those to the panel. So. As you can tell, kind of ramping that up again, once again, uh, just to meet needs. Finally, we do have our behavior intervention teams, which um, have been in full swing all year. However, recently we have had to call some extra meetings due to student needs and um, we anticipate that will continue. Our teams have done great at pulling together at short notice to address concerns and support families around students that are, um, have some kind of threat assessment to self or others. So working through that, we still have our CIVRA trained, which is for students that are uh, high, high threat. And that's a, a research-based tool that our trained folks use in partnership and then uh, work with the family to follow up on interventions that would be appropriate in school administration. So those teams have been found to be uh, invaluable right now. And last but not least, we are, Nabita is offering a panel that's open to anyone K-12, so parents may want to listen to. Uh, that's the National Association for Behavior and Threat Assessment. Uh, I'm on a panel to talk about K-12 post-COVID response and kind of the top 10 tips of things that our BIT team should be looking out for and what we should do. So hopefully that wasn't too long. I tried to condense it, but I will take any questions on any of the topics. Uh, if anyone has any. Um, where are all of these links, pa the panel, the four part series? I think I've seen that come out from the principals, but are they posted on the SAU website? 
Yeah, there's that extra resource page that they've been developing around this. The panel isn't out yet because we just met yesterday to finalize yeah. those, um, you know, logistics of that. But that'll come out after April vacation because I'm nervous that if I send it out before, right. it might get forgotten over vacation when everyone kind of, uh, you know, pushes out to do whatever they're doing over vacation. But we will continue to do that on all fronts. We try to post it on the school web pages if it's something for parents too. Um, so we usually push out a, through school messenger, some form of an email, and then follow it up with a link on the, on the web pages. Great. Thanks so much. Yep. Anything else? All right. Moving on um, is our nomination list. And we can do this in public unless anyone had a question about a particular person, then we would need to go in non-public. If there are no specific questions, we could have an approval of the nomination list through um, a motion on the board. Does anyone have any um, questions to go into non-public? I know I do not. I know Sarah had to step away for a minute. I do not. Okay. So should we wait for Sarah to get back or go ahead and move along, Esther? Is it fine or? It's fine, there'll be a, there's a majority, a quorum of the board, yes. So um, would anyone like to approve the nomination list as presented? Make a motion to do that? Or I can make a motion to do that, make a motion to approve the nomination list as presented. Maybe we should explain what the nomination list represents to the public. Sure. The sure. nomination list is um, all of our administrators, uh, Main Street teachers, and Lincoln Street teachers that are contractually obligated. That we have to admit, we have to give a contract out to our teachers by April fifteenth. And in order to do that, the board approves that the people on this list um, are all up to be nominated to receive a contract for next year. Perfect. Thanks. Thank I you. would make a motion to approve this list as stated for the nominations for the teachers. Okay. And administrators. I second. I second. Okay. So um, do you want to do a roll call vote, Esther? Is that easiest? Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Patty Surratt? Aye. Patrick O'Day? Aye. Deb Wheeler-Bean? Aye. And Don Bullens is aye. And so aye. Sarah's not here, so she missed that, but she I, she didn't express anything to me earlier, so I'm, I'd be surprised if she had other questions. Um, okay. I do, have, I do have one other thing, uh, a resignation yeah. that came in um, this week to present to the board for um, acceptance. I will read that letter. Um, Esteemed members of the Exeter School Board, it is with mixed emotions that I tenure my resignation from Lincoln Street School at the close of the 2021 school year. My husband's career has changed in an exciting but unexpected way, and I will need to be more available for our young daughter. The seven years I've spent at Lincoln Street were incredible and have undoubtedly made me the person that I am. I will treasure my time there for what I learned and for how it allowed me to grow professionally. As I told Mr. Bearstow, I'm not done teaching forever, just for now. I hope to be able to return to a classroom one day in some capacity. I will be available to clean out my former classroom once the academic year is concluded and once the concurrent occupant, Keith Schmidt, has been able to complete his end of year tasks. I will coordinate with Keith and Drew Bear Stroh for this when the time comes. I'm happy to discuss any additional questions you may have regarding my decision, but I know that I feel it is the right one for my family at this time. With deepest appreciation, Amy Steinberg. So I would ask the board to accept that letter of resignation on uh, behalf of the board. Yes, so I would say we usually ex accept the resignation with regret and um, wishes for a, a wonderful future and um, hope maybe to see you back someday. Um, is anyone, do we need to do a roll call vote for that as well, Esther? Okay, so does anyone have any other comments, questions? I would just like to make a comment for Go ahead. Um, just to thank Amy Steinberg for her years of service and tell her how happy we are for her new endeavors and we'll miss her and hope to see her back. Thank you, Deb. Well said. Yes, she will dearly be missed. Um, okay, so roll call vote, Deb Wheeler-Bean. I'm sorry, just before we do that, can we just make a motion and second it just so we have every box checked off? Okay, yeah, so go ahead and make the motion, Patrick. 
So I'll, I'll make the motion that, that you um, indicated before to accept the resignation with regret. Okay, and second. I'll second. Thank you, Deb. Okay, roll call vote. Deb Willerbean. Aye. Patrick O'Day. Aye. Patty Surratt. Aye. And John Bolins is aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That concludes my administrative update. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the approval of meeting minutes. We have two sets of minutes, one for the public board minutes um, from March 23rd, our last board meeting, and one also from the non-public board minutes that same evening. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? And are there any um, questions or changes or edits? Would anyone make like to make a motion to uh, approve or accept both sets of minutes or one at a time? Either way is fine. I can make the motion. I'll, okay. I'll move to accept both sets of minutes. Okay. Do we have a second? I can second that. Okay. So just a roll call vote here, please. So Patty Surratt. Aye. Deb Wheeler Bean? Aye. Patrick O'Day? Aye. And Don Bullins is aye. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so that is now going to bring us to the principal's reports. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things before we go ahead and do that, because I know they're going to talk about some um, return to school things. And as we've been mentioning, I know there's been a lot of changes since our last board meeting. So just for members of the public or who may view this later, um, just to see what we've talked about so that uh, our community is clear on sort of the steps that have gone on in the last, you know, four weeks, um, if you will. So I've made a few notes and I'm just going to go ahead and read through them and then see if there's any further discussion on that before the principals go ahead with their reports. So on March the 31st, um, memorandum of agreement was ten tentatively agreed on between the SAU 16 and the union. Uh, the start date for in-person schooling five days a week was to begin on May 3rd. Um, lots of reasons for that that has been, we've outlined a number of times, but I just wanted to sort of state that that's where, um, where, where this started after our last meeting. Um, on April 1st, the governor issued an order for New Hampshire schools to return to, to, to open for full in-person full in for five days for all New Hampshire schools on April 19th, 2021. On April 5th, uh, we received an email update on return to school from Esther to all board members. Uh, one board member requested a meeting to discuss executive order impacts. The chair and myself contacted all the other members of the, of the board individually to see if they also wanted to have a meeting to discuss um, the, the email and the return to order that we had in possession at that time. Um, the board member majority did not request a special meeting, so we did not have one to discuss the executive order impacts. Um, on April 8th, Superintendent Ryan notified the joint board that the SAU would in fact be able to meet the emergency order 89 requirements of opening on April 19th um, with the number of releases of the ADA American Disabilities Act needs bringing the accommodations down to 27 across the SAU as opposed to, I believe it was about 129 originally. Um, then on April 9th, um, the union brought back additional edits and language that they would like included um, in the contract. Um, those edits were then sent out to the board members. Dr. Ryan asked the board chairs to check in with their board members to see if they again wanted to have a meeting at this time to further discuss um, and talk about the edits. Um, the Our board, the Exeter board, um, all members were surveyed and the majority agreed that there was no need to further discuss the edits that were made and that we would continue to, to support the SAU administration in negotiating these terms. So as the last I know about um, what has happened with the contracts, what I understand is that they are still moving forward to whatever degree we haven't heard anything to the contrary, but that's where we are for um, our community listening in. 
And now we will turn it over to each of our principals to talk about what it is gonna mean when we go back to school on Monday. So Steve, are you ready for Main Street School? I think so you're muted. Better. So is better when you unmute, when, isn't it, with Zoom? All right. Um, Yes. Well, first of all, let me just talk about some of the things that we're just doing to help the children with the transition and we get ready for the return. Um, and I will say, I do know that that we still are hearing some concerns from parents who are concerned about either their family not being fully vaccinated or teachers fully vaccinated. We're working hard to meet the needs of those families the best we can. Um, in terms of getting ready for the children, uh, as teachers are uh, working to get their classrooms set up, uh, you know, it's interesting how much space means to kids. Space and routine means a lot to young children. So the teachers are really looking at just help having the kids become aware of the changes that are gonna happen in the spaces where they're learning. Uh, they're talking about some of the routines that'll be happening. I've had teachers who are doing letters where they're writing from one classmate to the other. I have teachers who are setting up meetings for classmates to meet each other. Um, there's talk about community building activities that will be taking place during the first week to really help reestablish. In some ways, it feels quite a bit like the first week of school, which is ironic when you think about where we are. But uh, we're really, again, we're starting to have to make some new friends and, and, and welcome each other. And with it comes a bit of an excitement, but also obviously trepidation. So we're trying to do everything we can uh, to help the kids feel comfortable as we get ready for that change. Um, and we'll certainly make sure that we have staff and adults available as the kids come in. I mean, some of these kids who will be coming in, this will be the first time that they will be visiting the building uh, this year, uh, which is which is just striking. Um, so, the in terms of the process, uh, we did do the survey. I know that both Drew and I worked really hard uh, to meet all the parent requests and parent needs uh, that came up. Um, and I feel like for the most part, we were fairly quite successful in terms of addressing those needs. Uh, furniture, uh, the, I want to thank Rusty Lister and his crew. Uh, they had oh, quite a bit of furniture was stored over there um, at the Tuck building because we needed to open up classrooms. And as we need more furniture for kids, it's coming back and we're starting to move around. Friday will be our transition day. It will be an asynchronous learning day where children will have assignments, but staff will be working on finishing, setting up classrooms, sharing information. Uh, it's important because we have a number of classrooms where kids will have uh, shift teachers again. Um, we've tried really hard to keep that to two teachers for the year, though uh, in a handful of children, we did have to have three. Um, and the... Um, We've been ordering supplies. We are still waiting for the plastic shields we ordered for lunch to come in, but we're looking at modifying our lunch routines until those come in so we can maintain the six feet that's needed when you don't have shields. Uh, I know the bus company will be sharing information and I have to thank Trish Daly who's worked really hard to try to get all of the um, bus routes up to snuff. And um, there's just, it's it's a, a change. I do have, I have one story I can't resist sharing. Forgive me. Um, I did have one. I asked one kid who was waiting to hear what was going to happen, whether it's April sixteenth, April nineteenth, or May third. Uh, she you know she said, "What do you think, Miss Tyler? When do you think we're going to come back?" And I said, "I don't know. Uh, what's your preference?" And she said, "You know, in the other part of the class, there's a boy who I have a crush on. So I'm really hoping we come back earlier." Um, so for her, I'm really glad. Um, it's great. And um, I just want to thank the staff uh, who have been working really, really hard to get ready for this transition. Um, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. And I'm sure Drew has other details. Drew, you want to go ahead? I think there's, we're probably, we've heard so much of this for so long. We know you all have been planning for so long, but maybe you can go ahead too, and then we'll just see if anyone has general questions for either of you. Sure. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate what, what Stephen was mentioning. I mean, this is, a, this 
the word is way overused at this point, but just unprecedented how much uh, the staff is doing to, you know, manage the, the student experience that, you know, they have currently, whether it's in person or remote, while also trying to ready their classrooms as if it's, you know, before school even starts and they're organizing their classroom, you know, it's building the airplane while it's flying, you know, it's, um, it's pretty impressive. Um, some of the, per we've had some personnel shifts uh, to accommodate for 504 and IEP. So there are some um, paraprofessionals who are just showing their flexibility uh, in terms of, you know, shifting their assignments mid, mid swing. Um, so just a ton of flexibility and just a huge amount of, of appreciation for the staff who are, who are doing this. Um, and uh, like my, Steve mentioned as well, the uh, uh, room changes, we have 11 rooms at Lincoln Street School that are changing uh, function and purpose. Um, so um, the custodial staff is, you know, working days and nights and trying to figure out where those, that furniture is going, where it's coming from, while the, the teachers are trying to figure out what kind of furniture they, they need in their classrooms. Um, we've ordered some partitions uh, to put in the cafeteria. We're sort of renovating the cafeteria to be a small a space for a small group instruction. So we have, um, it's almost like cubicles. We'll have about six different small group instruction spaces in there broken up by cubicles, which those, those um, partitions are, are great. They really deaden the sound in there. So it's, it's giving me some ideas for that cafeteria for the future. I don't know. Um, Ms. Wheeler-Bean, I know you know how loud that cafeteria gets. So. <laughs> um, so let's see, we are, Steve mentioned the bus. Um, we're working with Gene Pierce and the food services to coordinate our lunches. We're going to have um, six different lunches at Lincoln Street School. So I know one of the biggest questions folks are having right now is, so because uh, we're splitting our classrooms up into two in order to make space in the classroom. So half the classroom will be eating lunch at a time while the other half is at recess. And then halfway through that recess lunch block, they'll, they'll flip flop. Um, so because of that setup, we have six lunch blocks instead of three. And so because the lunch, the duration is longer now, the first lunch has to start at 1015, which is admittedly very early and not ideal. But um, what has um, made folks uh, more understanding and, and um, more agreeable to the situation is saying that snack then also does not have to be in the morning. So teachers, if that is the case, the teachers or classrooms will have snack in the afternoon. So there are, you know, there's an equal amount of time between when kids have their breakfast, their lunch, their snack, and when they go home. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone knows that we're definitely aware of that. It's not ideal um, that lunch is so early, but it's, we're also, you know, making changes to accommodate for um, everyone's dietary needs. Um, so, uh, let's see, I mentioned our, how we're handling lunches, uh, recesses, uh, students will be half of a, like I mentioned, half the class at a time will be outside and they'll have designated areas, uh, where they play so we can keep track of where the kids are on any given day for contact tracing reasons. They will be with an, like a buddy, uh, classroom while they're out at recess. So they'll have a chance to play with another half of another class. And it'll be that same class every day that they're matched with. And then they'll rotate sections on the playground over the course of the week. Um, so that's uh, a little bit different than it is right now. Right now they're out there with their entire cohort um, and just uh, uh, with that one class and they don't mix with another class right now. So we're hoping that that'll give the kids a chance to be with a, a few extra kids uh, while still giving us some um, opportunity to keep track of who the kids are with. Um, Huge shout out to Miss Donnelly, who is our scheduling queen, who I think has uh, created a, a, is it 15 master schedules at this point? But um, <laughs> so uh, that a lot of a lot of work goes into that, and I just um, appreciate you, Dan Deanna, for making that happen. Um, let's see. We've uh, had a lot of questions about our admittance and our uh, pickup routine. Um, so we'll be operating the same way that we have been this way, but obviously we'll probably be about doubling the number of cars um, on a given day for parents who are dropping off and picking up. So we just, um, and then I guess this is similar to the bus routes. We expect the first couple of days to go very slowly, um, just as you know, we're all getting used to the, the same, uh, the, a new process. 
um, but I expect it to, to pick up pretty quickly because everyone has been doing the process all year long. It's just a, a larger volume at this point. So um, one change to the pickup routine, however, um, and this has uh, been a question I've had a couple different ways uh, from a couple different families. So we are going to have siblings uh, walk up from Main Street School accompanied by Main Street School staff. Um, I believe at 210, they'll be dismissed from Main Street School. Uh, they'll walk up uh, together um, up the sidewalk and they'll come over into our basketball court area. Uh, little legs, long way to travel. It's gonna take them a little bit of time. Um, so we are asking that any family that is picking up a sibling or another child at Lincoln Street School from Main Street School that they come at the tail end. So we're saying 2.30 uh, of pickup. So those families aren't either clogging up the, the pickup line or we're not making them have to drive back around to the end of the of end of the line. So that time might change once we get a sense of, you know, what the, how the flow will, will go. Um, but uh, we're hoping, you know, that's a relatively accurate um, guess at this point. Let's see. Um, one thing that we've, uh, our restorative justice leadership team uh, has been working hard to uh, provide um, opportunities for the staff to um, just connect with each other and, and have um, an outlet. Um, I think Esther mentioned the tripods that we have at, at Lincoln Street School and Main Street School. Restorative justice um, leadership team is also um, seeking ways to, to just reach out to staff and make sure staff feel supported. Uh, and um, Chris Clifford, our guidance counselor, is sending out various, um, we call them circle flows, just ways for, or ideas for teachers to work with kids in the classroom to get them prepared for the transition to conversations they can have. Esther was mentioning uh, scripts, things like that, um, just opening, opening the door to um, to feel out how people are doing and uh, provide support in whatever direction uh, uh, the kids need. Um, and I'm also, uh, I'm collecting questions from both remote and in-person kids um, just through a, uh, an online form. So kids can put in whatever questions that they have. I've been doing video announcements every day. Um, so I go around and I, whether I might answer the questions myself on the daily announcements so everyone in the school is watching these. Uh, or um, I'll have, I'll take some videos of children who are in school. Most of the questions are um, remote kids asking what it's like kind of in, inside the school. So I, I try and have kids answer those questions as much as possible so they can um, sort of seeing and hearing is believing from your peers. Um, and I think those are the big ones, obviously communication, 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 trying to do as much as we can to make sure everyone uh, knows and um, knows what to expect. Um, I think I got everything, all the, the major questions that we've been feeling so far, but I'm happy to answer any more if you have them. I have a question. Um, Stephen, Drew, what are your numbers for remote and um, in person? Are those remaining how they were like about 75% in person? No, it's we've shifted more to about 90, 10, Deb. So we will okay. have one um, classroom, one kindergarten, one first grade, and one second grade teacher teaching remotely. Um, and then the other 23 classroom teachers will be teaching in person. Okay. Yeah, we're about 87, 13. And uh, so we have just under 60 students remaining remote, uh, and the rest will all be in person. And will you have one grade level teacher for each remote? Yep, uh, the numbers are a little bit variable per, per grade level, um, but um, it's, it's yeah, one, one, I think fourth grade has about 20 and the other two have a, a little bit fewer than that. And if I'm a remote family and I decide that um, I'm comfortable sending my student back, can they come back? It's at Lincoln Street School, it's dependent on the grade level and, and just the numbers. Uh, for the most part, I'll say that's, it's doable, um, but it's just it, it's just dependent on the space. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've had some families call me after the survey, and and so far I've been able to accommodate the request. And it's like Drew just said, <clears throat> if if we can accommodate it, we certainly make every effort to. Okay.
Okay, any other questions or do you, Steve and Drew, have anything else to add about committee reports? Um, I know I can't imagine that you've done a lot of other committee work with all this back to school planning, but just checking. Can I just add one more thing? Just uh, yeah. I wanted to make sure I give Renee some some kudos as well for uh, her special ed team has, has done an awesome job at uh, being flexible and, and responding to all the change her, her the, um, just that, that making sure all the IEPs are covered and everyone's getting what they need. So um, just want to make sure that slipped in there too. Great. Uh, so um, Don, I do have a few other updates that are unrelated. By the way, I did want to say with our dismissal, we did, uh, because Main Street um, can be so congested, we did divide our dismissal into two uh, slots, A through K is at 215. This is for cars only. For, for parents who are picking up, if the family's last name is A through K, we're having them picks come up between around 215. If the family's last name is L through Z, um, then we're having them come at 230. We're going to see how that works. We just were really afraid that if we had everyone coming at once that the line could go way past the railroad tracks going up Main Street and we didn't want to see that happen. Okay. I'll just make a comment before you do committee reports just about the return to school. I, I just think it's so great that everyone really pulled together. I know you, I remember Steve, you in particular had said um, at the last meeting that if that ended up being what we did, we'd sort of figure it out. Um, and I know it's not easy, um, but it also hasn't been easy for parents, particularly for some of the folks that really wanted to get back into the school. So I am just really appreciate the extra effort that everyone made to try to meet that need that's out there. So thank you. Absolutely. And and, and it really was a team effort. So thanks. Um, in terms of just other highlights, we do do other things besides plan for two transitions. I know this might feel hard to believe in this day and age. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to our new librarian, Maureen Kiesel. Um, she, um, Maureen, uh, does some very creative uh, videos each week. Uh, she dresses up as different characters. Uh, it's quite, quite fun to see. And in a graduate class that she's been um, involved with, they actually made copies of the videos and, and have used them as examples to share. Um, mini field trips, uh, second grade class. I just want to thank Lincoln Street for their maple sugaring. Uh, I know our second grade class enjoyed that as a mini field trip. Um, and I do want to thank Carla Putney again for our staff book group. Uh, they read the book Onward by Eileen Aguilar this month, which focused on habits that build resilience and certainly very apropos for this time. Um, Beth and Renee have done a, a fantastic job uh, being leading um, work that looks at MTSS or multi-tiered system of support work. They've been working with the consultant Marianne Nice, and this group is currently working on our uh, vision with the goal of creating actionable action steps for following up in the coming year. And I'm sure it'll have some exciting uh, work will continue in that area. And then um, just want to do a shout out uh, for our remote wellness activities. This really was a nice chance to bring in remote students. We had a lot of fun activities going on, some Zumba dancing, uh, some sports. I will say I, I, I'm going to confess I swung at a baseball tee and missed with a ball sitting on the tee. You know, it's just it's amazing some things that you just can't do sometimes. Anyway, um, but it is fun. I'm sure to get the team was kind of low for you. I'm sorry. I just thought to give you an excuse. It, well, the bat was little too. There were a lot of reasons I missed, and the fact that I haven't swung a baseball bat in 30 years might be a little bit to do with it. But if I tried a second time, I'm sure I would have done better. Um, you know, you got to keep trying on these things, otherwise, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, we, and there was a bubble party and a lot of other fun activities. And so that's just been fun. And it's been a nice to have those remote uh, children come. And again, it's, um, it's just continues to be striking, particularly with the young kids about just how excited they are to actually come to the school physically and just how much it means to them and their parents. And, uh, you know, so much we've taken for granted prior to this year. 
Um, I do want to thank uh, Beth for organizing the Stop, Drop, and Read program. Uh, they had a great turnout. Um, and our second graders were invited to log their minutes during the month of March, and they read an impressive 1,700 hours during this time. And we do thank the Exeter Fire Department for continuing to support this, pro this program um, and also for their vaccinations. And we will be getting our second vaccination. And my other advice, because I did get my second vaccination, is ice where you get the vaccination that does help the swelling. Um, that's it for my, did I miss anything for this month? Oh, and then um, I have to thank you. I don't know if you saw my last newsletter. Um, last year, you may remember with, remember with end of the year funds, um, you thrilled Katie McNamara, our phys ed teacher, by supporting her request for a new climbing wall in our gym. And I put a picture of it in this last newsletter and it's awesome. Um, and the kids are really having fun as a physical activity. And that's just sort of the kind of special thing that, um, I don't know, makes our building, it's just great. I, I, I am so thrilled with the, what the things we've been able to do is just add some just unique experiences in our school. So thank you. Okay, thank you both for that. Um, so I, believe that brings us to committee reports. Um, and we're going to start off with DEIJ, uh, Patty and Patrick. Do we have updates on that? Thank you. Go ahead, Patty. I, I, I actually don't, Patrick. So I was hoping you might. Um, all I can say is our next full committee meeting is on April 20th at 7.45 in the morning. Uh, well, Thanks. What I can say is uh, related to, not related to that committee per se, but related to DEIJ is that um, I mentioned at the last meeting, I was going to connect with Toyin, who's our uh, trainer for a follow-up session with the board and with the new board. And I was finally able to connect with her just yesterday. And she has proposed um, three days that fall during spring uh, vacation. So I don't know if that's going to work or not, but the three days that she proposed as possibilities were that Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday um, of that week. So hold on a second, I'll tell you what the days are. The 28th, 29th, or 30th from 11 to 3. Um, she says if those dates and times don't work, we can you know, tell her and she'll look at, at other ones. But that's the, the earliest group of times that she could get because I said that we were interested in doing something if possible in April. Um, but if not, we can, I can have her look at, at dates in May and coordinate with, through Esther and Dawn to get that out to the board and, you know, see if we can figure out another date. But I don't know what the initial reaction is to those dates and times. I can do it, but that doesn't mean everyone else can. Patrick, I'll know in two days whether or not I can do it. Um, I'm about 90% I cannot because I might okay. be out of town. Yeah. I'm sorry, Patrick, I would not be able to do any of those days. Well, that makes it easy then, because I, I know it's something that we want to make sure everyone was there. So, you know, if one person is sure they can't make it, then we really need to look at some other dates. Are there weeks as we, maybe we can do this. Are there any weeks in May that we know just the entire week is off limit for some reason? Um, I, I mean, school vacation is sort of an obvious one. People might be traveling for that or, or using that time, but is there anything in May that we should avoid that folks know about? If I'm if I'm away, I'll be gone through May eighth, <clears throat> so the first week of May would be off for me. But I'll know that for sure in two days. Okay, yeah. So we can wait to find out where you are with that, Deb. So, but otherwise, maybe avoid the first week in May. Anything else that jumps out? Okay. So, Deb, maybe if you can send me a note and let me know once you know what your status is, and and then I'll I'll follow up with uh, with Toyin. We'll do, Patrick. But that's all. That's all I had for DIJ. Sounds good. Um, so that brings us to enhanced learning, which is Sarah, and she had to jump off the call. She won't be on for the rest of the meeting, I don't believe. Um, so I don't know if there's anything, Drew, um, to share. Just, I think the only thing is our DEIJ committee is working to identify and sort of rewrite some um, SMART goals for next school year. Um, and that, that's, I think, I believe what's on the agenda for our, our next meeting. Okay. All right. That sounds good. 
Um, so that then brings us to facilities, which is myself and Patrick. And I know there's been some tree work and things like that going on. We haven't met, um, but I know that there's going to be tree work um, done at the preschool um, and uh, Main Street School. And I can't remember if Lincoln was involved as well. I don't think Lincoln was involved, but is it Patrick, do you have anything else to share about that? I think Rusty's just gonna go ahead and take care of that. I know he got some proposals and whatnot. So that's what's happening there for right now. I know they're working hard to get everything ready for back to school um, otherwise. So um, then that is gonna bring us to negotiations. Um, I know there's none currently going on. I sort of highlighted some of the things that have been happening, but Patrick, do you wanna speak at all about that? Um, I have a question or comment, but maybe it's better. It's not really a report, something I just wanted to discuss. And maybe we can bring it up under new business instead, if that makes sense. Okay, sure. Uh, then that will bring us to policy. Um, is there anything for that? That's Sarah and Patrick as well. Yeah, Sarah sent me a note too and asked if I would uh, present on this. We were both at the last meeting and we're looking at Title IX. Uh, there are a number of changes that were made this past year to the timeline law and we raised some questions even though the, it's interesting even though the policy had been vetted by attorneys and by other staff and whatnot uh, both Sarah and I raised some questions about some things enough where David thought it made sense to take another look at it so on this Thursday is our next meeting um, whoever's on the policy committee at that point and uh, we're going to still be looking at title IX. It's, it's just, it's a, there are a lot of changes that were made to that law and we're really trying to make sure that we're complying and the policy reads in a way that's easy to understand because it's an important one. Okay, any further questions on that or? That will then bring us to sabbatical, which is Deb Wheeler-Bean and Sarah Edwards. I don't know if you've met regarding that yet. Yes, we met on the 6th and we reviewed one sabbatical proposal um, that is going to be resubmitted so we can review it for further detail. Um, there were just, uh, we had questions and we just wanted to give this teacher a chance to really explain what her intentions were and goals. Um, and we are going to um, meet next week sometime. What, when was it, Esther? <laughs> 20th, I think, April 20th. Tuesday, yes. Yeah. Oh, is there a is there a timeline for that when when they have to be approved by I can't recall if there's a date or or if it's like if it's for next year it's just by the end of this year you need to let them know is well, there, there a contractual there is a date um this year things just kind of got put in piles and so the dates have been relaxed a little bit um that's not the norm um but Esther do you know the dates for next year for filing yeah you just have to um by December 1st, submit that you are going to put in for a sabbatical in the in the contract. And normally we would meet sooner than this. It just, um, with HR changing, who usually manages this, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's later than normal. Normally we would be looking at this more, uh, you know, February-ish, January, depending. So next year, that'll be the timeline and we'll get that up and running sooner if anyone applies. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, that brings us to safety and security, Patty. Um, so Esther, just let me know that the next meeting is on May 27th. Um, I don't specifically have update on what they've been doing outside of what they've always been doing. So for me, safety and security um, has everything to do with physical and the mental health of our students and our staff. And that's always been ongoing in our school district. Um, I think it's been exacerbated by the pandemic. And so there's a more people to have to respond to, to prepare for, and that all falls under safety and security in some way. Um, and all those different teams work together and it's, it's impressive. And, um, there's probably room for another board me member to be on that committee if they're interested in, in it. Um, but I will get more updates after our May meeting. I was just going to say, I, I am the other board member that's on that committee. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. I, I thought that's it okay. Was I don't have, I don't have to get, year, that's right. 
I don't think I have anything else to report, but I did a nice job. But <laughs> I was the one that was assigned this past year to join you on that committee, at least. Okay. Okay, I'll make sure your name is on here. Well, for now that your name, both of your names are still on here um, for the committee reports. Okay. Uh, that brings us to superintendent evaluation. Patty, I don't know if there's anything further where that's at these days or if that's all finished. You're on mute, Patty. Sorry, um, I need to circle back with some of the other committee members and Travis um, to see where we left off because the chair of that committee is no longer on the school board. And so, um, everything was kind of in his hands. So I need to circle back, but there's no update at this time, but there's no action items that need to be done either. Don, can I, can I just say again, thank you to Patty for being our representative on that, that committee. That is a really hard committee. Up. It's a hard committee to be on. And particularly with, you know, now if there's a change, because it seems like Tim was, you know, sort of had a vision on how he's doing it. If it's a whole change and you have to, start over or something. It's just a really tough committee. It's important, but it's tough. So thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. So that brings us to wellness, which I'm on the wellness committee um, with Steve. And I think the last committee, the last committee meeting was all the talk about get fit in May and all the things that the schools are going to be doing to support that and make it exciting. Um, all the things that sort of Allison highlighted at the beginning of her PTO presentation. Um, I know that that uh, the schools are, as always, are very supportive and excited about this um, event and the month usually surrounding the event. So it's really nice to see um, you also have the same level of enthusiasm as you do in a usual year. So I think that's going to mean a real, really a lot to the students and their families. So. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's anything else. I'm not sure when the next meeting is. I have to check. Is it, I think the end of this month or next month? Maybe it's May. It, yes, it's May. It, it would be in May. Let me check okay. the exact date for you. I think I just saw it somewhere. May 25th. May 25th is the next meeting there. So uh, we are looking forward to having a pep rally that we talked about, Don, this year. Oh, good. A, lot, a, virtu a virtual pep rally at both schools. That's excellent. That's going to be- And really when our, our phys ed teacher who's joined between two schools is, is coordinating it and, and it should be a lot of fun. I'm sure that the students are really going to enjoy that. That's always a really, really fun thing to do. So thank you for pulling that together. Um, okay, so I think that's it for committee assignments. Um, yeah. Can I ask something before we move on yeah. with that? Which is just that um, Esther had, I know Esther had sent me a note about a professional growth fund. I don't know, is that a separate committee that, um, I know I've done it, I've participated in the past, but that's not one that's on the list. And to the extent we're doing new committee assignments, I wanna make sure that doesn't get missed because I know there's a date coming up, I think a week from today at four o'clock where there's a meeting to review applications for professional development, professional growth opportunities. Patrick, thanks. That is a um, separate committee. And I, I have my list so I can get everyone's names correct. Maybe, maybe on the agenda. So um, I've got that one on the list. Okay, so that so my question about that is our next um, agenda item was new committee assignments. Um, Sarah had to drop off the call. So I don't know um, if we should my my notion would be to wait until the next meeting to do this or to um, if anyone if anyone would like to suggest if there's a commi committee here that they really would like to be part of or really do not want to be part of next year, maybe we can do a little shuffling um, and, or and set, kind of keep that in the back of our heads. But otherwise, I would sort of suggest that we wait until our next meeting to do this. Um, if you know and just have committee members at this point fill in through you know, the next meeting. Um, does anyone have any objections or concerns or want to have further discussion about that? Don, I just wanted to raise one thought. I, I agree with what you're saying overall because um, I don't want, wouldn't want Sarah to feel left out from that process. And we've always done it a very collaborative way. 
but I also am cognizant of the person on the Brady square to the right of me uh, looking at this at the screen, Deb, um, isn't on committees right now for the most part. She's on the sabbatical one. And so, you know, if there's a, uh, I'm on a bunch of committees, for example, Deb, if there's one of those committees that you're interested in being on, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have you swap in and I can sit out of that or, and I'm sure other members would feel the same way. I would just hate to see another month go by and Deb doesn't have a chance to get engaged. I, I would really like to be on the facilities committee. Is that one that you'd be willing to, to trade out with me? Sure. No, that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, do you, do you, Don, are you okay with staying on the facilities committee with uh, Deb for the next yeah. month? Uh, I'm fine with whatever. Whatever works is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll start with um, that one. <laughs> and I'm also on the sabbatical committee. Um, yeah. Well, and what about this professional growth fund? You said there's a meeting coming up for that or because that's that's a committee that I've never heard of in all of my years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it meets once a once a year. If there's no sabbatical, it's in the contract that there's $18,000 and people can apply for it. So I think Mr. Flynn used to just organize it and pull in a board member. I don't believe it was an official committee, Don. And um, so I think Patrick brought it up in case someone else might be interested to be on that committee because he's been the rep for ever since I have been doing it with um, this group. So certainly we're supposed to meet uh, next week. And if uh, people are okay, it would maybe make sense for Patrick to attend that one. And then if someone else if it ends up as you do committee, you know, it's next month for everyone, unless someone really has a huge interest and they can attend also or instead of whatever the board prefers. What, one of the things I can say about that committee, I'm available to attend, so it's not an issue that I have a conflict, but if Deb or someone else wants to attend, it's not something that um, you need a lot of prior knowledge. You sort of show up and, you know, you, you go over, I think sometimes we've distributed the applications in advance, so you have a chance to review the applications before you walk in the door, but, um, but I haven't gotten them yet, so it's not like I've done work prior to now. Um, it's just really reading through the applications and then figuring out, depending on how much money is available, how many of the things we can fund. And you know, I think we try to fund, the applications are usually really strong and really thoughtful, and we try to fund as many as we can for the most part. And most years, it seems like 90% to 100% are funded. But um, it, you know, there's no guarantee with that. The committee does what it does. So anyhow. Yeah. The final yeah. of submission from staff is the 16th of April. And once I once that date goes, then I will scan everything and send it out to the folks that are on that particular group. That makes sense, yeah. So I have a question about another committee that I'm interested in. Um, what exactly does the Enhanced Learning Committee do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Historically, it's been a committee that uh, sort of connects Main Street School and Lincoln Street School, and it sort of connects whether it's curriculum, instruction, assessment, it's something in those lines to make sure that the two schools are sort of, you know, Main Street School is handing off the, their students to us and we're receiving, you know. Mm -hmm. For continuity. Know. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, most recently, the, um, I mean, this year has is, is just sort of been kind of blown up in a way, but uh, most recently, a lot of our work has been in, in the realm of competency-based education. Did a lot, a lot of work and discussion with Alma and um, with the new uh, learning reports. Um, and I would anticipate, you know, next year probably um, focusing on, you know, really specifically probably math and reading. We haven't had this discussion. This is me brainstorming, but I'm thinking that we're looking at math and reading and how we're supporting the kids post COVID um, I would imagine that would be probably a topic for discussion, but that's to be determined by the committee. Right. Well, I see that just Sarah is on. Yeah, there. I was just going to say that, Deb. So do you want to slide in there? Is that something you have interest in? I, I'm very interested in that. Okay, so let's put you in there. Does anybody have any concerns with the sort of little moves and sideways changes we're making here? And then we can sort of talk about it, or I can even let Sarah know um, sort of where we're at and ask her if she has any committees she really, she'd prefer not to be on or um, move things around in that way. And, you know, you all could email Esther and myself as well, and maybe we can just um, make any obvious changes and sort of touch base on it again next meeting just to see if there's anything further. 
You know, one one comment I just want to make, Don, and, and that's just, it's about DEIJ. I know I know both Patty and I really love that committee. I mean, there's, they're they're doing great work. It's really interesting work. Um, early on, our board had tried to sort of rotate through members. I don't know if that's still the philosophy or not. Um, if that was the case, I guess it would be you know Don and Deb would be on that committee this year. Um, there's, it's not a rule. I just wanted to bring that up because it's a, it's a topic that, that's come up. I, I suspect, I can speak for myself, I would love to stay on the committee. I suspect Patty feels the same way. She's been very involved, but I'm also cognizant of that it's important that you know our, our whole board is showing a commitment to uh, those issues. So I don't wanna stand in the way of that as well. So maybe it's something we can mull over between now and next month and just you know, see, see where the board wants to go with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do, I do agree that at some point in your term on this board, I do think some, you should participate in that. I also think that the work they're doing or that we're all doing together, some, maybe having continuity for a couple of years, a couple of us doing it makes sense because relationships are formed, subcommittees are formed. And so, I'm not trying to block anyone else out. It, it is a tremendous amount of work, but um, but it is really, it's a it's a committee that everyone should at least have the experience of being on at least once. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. So why don't we sort of, again, think about that. We should probably check in with Sarah as well um, on that. So we'll sort of mull those over until the next meeting, but in the, in the short term, the quick changes that we've made with Deb, um, why don't we sort of leave it at that as, as we will um, until we can further discuss. Okay, so we're gonna move on to new business. Is there any new business? Esther, go ahead. I did just receive literally on email, thank you, Steve Adler, um, another letter of resignation. So I would like to read that and um, have the board accept or approve this if you see fit. Dear Dr. David Ryan, Esther Aswell, Steve Adler, and Exeter School Board members, please accept this letter as my official resignation from my position as first grade teacher at Main Street School. This was not an easy decision, but after much contemplation, I've decided to focus my attention on my family's needs at home. I greatly appreciate the opportunities SAU 16 has provided me, as well as the guidance and support that has allowed me to grow as an educator. I've thoroughly enjoyed being a teacher at Main Street School, and I'm honored to have had the chance to touch the lives of so many children and watch them grow. It has been a pleasure to learn from them as it has been to teach them. I will sincerely miss this position, my colleagues in the school committee. Thank you very much for this amazing opportunity. These past 15 years has been very rewarding. I wish you all the best. Please let me know if you need any additional information and do not hesitate to reach out by phone or my home email. Sincerely, Andrea Hebert. So I would ask um, the board to make a motion to accept this letter of resignation from Andrea Hebert. I can make a motion to accept the letter of resignation from Andrea Hebert with regret um, and wishing you all the best in the future. And thank you for all of your service um, at Main Street School and here in our SAU. Um, do you have a second or any other comments? I would I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Deb. Okay, we're gonna do a roll call vote. Um, all those in favor, um, sorry, roll call vote, Deb? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Patty? Aye. And Dawn, I'm an aye. So thank you for that. Good timing to get it in so we could get it on the- <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Steve. Go ahead, Steve, do you have something? I, I just wanted to thank Andrea. She's always been a tremendous teacher and, and always gave her heart and soul and, and she, she just, put so much care and thought into, into her classroom and the work she did with children and, and she will be missed. And I, I do thank her for all her years of dedication. That's all. Thank you. Um, okay, so that any other new business, Patrick, go ahead. So I had a couple things. Um, one is I wanted to make a comment about public input and make a sort of reiterate, I, I don't know if this is old business because I don't know if it ever ended up on the agenda, but um, I just the form, the way we're doing public input, I'd really like us to explore um, avenues for changing that. 
um, since last August, I think, and you know, mainly because of COVID, obviously, and um, when we had those uh, return to school and we had panel discussions, and you know, we all got listed as panelists, we started to use the comment section, and um, I had given some feedback to the um, to the board chair going back to last August that I thought we should move away from that, and I just want to share that with the entire board now. But I. I sort of made that more privately, but you know, I wanna say that publicly that I'm feeling more and more strongly about, we really need to move away from the, the using the comments. Um, we need to figure out a way to actually see members of the public and hear their voices. And I know it's cumbersome uh, using video to do that, but I think there's a way to do it. For example, I've spent a little bit of time thinking about it, but I don't think that's the only way to go about it. You could use the chat function so that someone puts their name in and where they're from, which is what our public input policy requires. And then the chair could call on them and Esther or whoever is moderating it could um, you know, unmute them and have their video and let them speak. And uh, the chair has the option of limiting the amount of time they speak if, you know, if there's a need to do that. But I just think it's important to really hear from people. I don't, I've never been a fan of the chat function. Um, I think it was important when we had a question and answer session last August, um, because we were really just looking for questions and uh, that was the efficient way to do it. And that made a lot of sense, but I think we've moved away from that um, now, or we should be moving away from that now and getting back to just really hearing the input directly from people, unfiltered uh, pros and cons of what comes out. Um, one last thing I'd say about that is just that I think one of the issues I have with the, with the uh, chat function is that someone writes a comment and then they don't get to hear the commentary from other people. And so uh, I know from in the past when we were meeting live, someone would say something and then they'd say, oh, someone already made that point. I'm going to make a different point. But it's kind of already set in stone on the chat function. And it just, I don't think it works well for everyone. Some people are good writers and can express their thoughts that way, but other people really um, do much better with speaking in person. So I would prefer we get away from using the chat function in that way. I, I'm i gonna tag on to that a little bit. Um, being someone who's watched a lot of board meetings, um, for, I, I know this is different and I know it's video and I, I know it's Zoom and we've been going through an awful lot and it can get long um, and a little unwieldy, but I would like to hear people's voices. I think it's really important as someone who, you know, just knowing families too, just getting feedback from families wanting to be heard more than just writing an email to an administrator or a board member, more than jotting things down in the chat. People do want their voices to be heard. And, and if they're gonna take the time to show up, this is, this is feedback I've gotten from some people in my neighborhood. If they're gonna take the time to show up, they'd like to have their actual voice heard. Um, that's my thought on it. I, I think we can talk about it and talk to leadership and find out if other schools are just gonna start doing that as well and, and what that might look like and how easy that would be to, to manage that. You know. I, I'd be in support of looking into it. Do you want to move on to another topic? Uh, sure. Yeah. And I, I think that I just want to comment on all of that. And I think um, I think we would all like things to be going a little bit differently. And I'm not really sure the best way to to set it all up. Um, you know, um, I think it's difficult and challenging and I'm hoping that we are coming out of a place where we're gonna need to continue to, to continually meet on Zoom um, and that people can actually come and be part of our discussions. Um, I'm not sure when that's gonna be, um, but it's certainly something that we should think about. And if people have suggestions about how to do it is helpful um, so that, you know, someone can maybe bring something to the table to say, hey, what if we try this or try that? Um, I, I don't personally have uh, any experience with that. So I'm not really sure the right way to manage it. So, and with that, yes, go, go ahead, Patrick, if you have something else to discuss. Yeah, no, I don't wanna 
and I don't want to repeat myself too much, but I, I had one way of doing it, but I, you know, I don't know all the technology and I know there were limitations before. I'm um, just to stay on the, the same topic for a moment. I remember last fall, uh, part of the concern was we had so many people on with hundreds of people that there really wasn't a way to do that except for to have the board members as panelists and others, you know, outside of that. So I know there were some limitations, but um, I don't know. I mean, it might be worth, I don't know if there's another program we should be looking at or other things to get around those limitations. I guess I'm not anticipating we're going to have a lot of meetings with hundreds of people on, but you never know. If there's a some controversy in the fall, then it attracts a lot of people. Or if there's an issue about transitioning back to school in the fall, for example, maybe there are times where we're going to have more people than we can handle. I, it, to the extent we can we can anticipate it and work around it, it would be nice to, to do that. All right, I'll move on uh, to the the other uh, one. Of the other things I want to bring up briefly, and I, I really appreciate you, Don, um, sort of going over some of the timeline with things um, with the negotiations. I did have a concern relative to it. I just wanted to raise, um, and it's not what decisions were made because uh, the decisions that our board makes, you know, we make as a board, and uh, I support our decisions as a board. It's more about the process. Um, you know, the right to know law says that you can uh, have someone uh, make calls, which, you know, Don as the chair did to each board member, uh, only if it's under something like a non-meeting. Uh, as a, if, if you're going to be, if the chair is calling every single person, that has to be a meeting. If they're, if they're uh, making individual calls about substantive things, then they can do that under the context of a non-meeting uh, relative ne to negotiations, for example. So um, I think it was completely appropriate that uh, we had those discussions that Don, you know, checked in with everyone to say, what do you think about this idea about, you know, meeting over, should we meet or not over negotiations? And then secondly, when there was the second time it happened, um, I think it was also appropriate that our board had that discussion in the context of negotiations that there were some potential changes that were being negotiated at the administrative level, but we were having a conversation with our board to say, do we agree with negotiations that are happening or not? Do we wanna talk about it? So I'm mildly concerned about is that I do think that that should be coordinated through the negotiations committee instead of through the chair. Um, unless the chair is the, you know, running the negotiations. Um, we had some conversations about this last year as a board, and I know it's a different board now, but our board was somewhat unique in that uh, most boards said, we're gonna have our chair be a representative for anything related to negotiations. And so I think every other board in the SAU, except for ours, had their chair be the one that showed up when we were talking about the MOAs and when we were talking about other negotiation related things. Um, our board decided that past the last year's board decided that we we're going to have the members on the negotiations committee, which over this past year were Patty, were excuse me, were Sarah and I, um, be the ones who are the representatives for that. So, I, if we're going to have some a discussion about negotiations, I think it should be coordinated through the committee. I guess is my is my point there. Um, I am not faulting anyone on intentions. There were we're trying to be efficient. There are good intentions here. I, I it's not meant as a criticism in that way. I just think. As a process, I think it makes more sense to be coordinated through the negotiations committee, unless as a board, we want to decide that the negotiations committee shouldn't be the one who's representing our board, but we should have our chair represent our board, um, which is what other boards did. It's, um, I personally am in favor of the negotiations committee doing it, but it's not illogical to have the chair um, represent us if that's what we want to do. But that was not my understanding about what we had decided uh, prior to now. So I wanted to raise that. Okay, any other further discussion on that? So I think that brings us to the end of our meeting, unless there is any other old business that we need to discuss or new business. Um, and it is one old business item, which is just about food security. 
I mean, I, and it's not on the agenda per se, and I know it's fallen sort of under the wellness rubric, but um, I'm just curious if we, you know, are, are, are seeing any, uh, if anyone has a sense if things have improved. I know there were some moves that were made um, in January, February to shift the pickups and uh, some other efforts where we had for a short time, we had some things on the uh, marquee out front to really try to advertise to families. And I know that there's been some independent efforts to really try to increase participation, but whether not we've seen any effects and if there's anything else we can do to try to help in that area. I don't know if anyone had, if anyone knows anything that they can report or, or say about that. Maybe there's nothing to be said. <laughs> I think I'm just still, I, I, it's still on my mind. It's something that, that I'm concerned about um, because I know the need's still there, even though, you know, the pandemic is whatever, the vaccines are improving, but there's still a lot of families in need from everything I'm hearing. I'll make a note of it to check in and with Gene Pierce, Patrick, and see if I can share something at the next board meeting. That's great, thank you. Okay, anything else, Patrick? No? Okay, with that, would I, would, I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting at 7.04 p.m. at the Exeter School Board meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Patty. Okay, roll call vote. Patty Surratt? Aye. Deb Wheeler Bean? Aye. Patrick O'Day? Aye. Don Bullens is aye. So that concludes this meeting. Thank you all. Good luck to you in the next week ahead and days ahead. And we know that you're going to do an amazing job getting everybody back to school and um, be safe and be well and uh, take a deep breath. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a good night. Bye.